news. Hi there, and welcome to Mammal Watch with Amy, Belinda, and Sophie. Don't forget me, I'm in this tree. My name's Emma. On today's Mammal Watch, we're looking at giving up densities. But what does that mean? Well, it can be defined as the amount of time the animal stays at a food site before moving on. But why would you want to leave free food? Well, I'll tell you why. Animals feeding in a more open area are going to be more vulnerable to predators because they're feeding further from the safety zone. So by feeding there, they need to gain enough nutritional benefits from the food to outweigh the predation risk they're incurring. So, let's go test it out. This is our dense area. So here we have one of our setups to try and record mammal activity. We place a hundred gram of peanuts covered by a kilogram of sand into this metal tray here. And today we have done four of these in total. And we've placed them ten paces away from each other. Let's have a look at them. On two of the trays we have these tubes which are covered in sellotape to hopefully catch the fur of the mammals. So, Belinda, what have we got here? Well, Amy, first of all, we have a small tile. On the tile, we can capture urine samples if small animals and mammals come and urinate on the tile as they come to the food patch. But now, even more interestingly, we have a camera set up on this tree. And what happens is, it has a small sensor, and if, again, a mammal comes along into our tray, it's going to pick up the mammal's movement and going to start a short video clip which we can watch later to see what species it is. Wow! We also set up food trays in this semi-dense area. And here in an open area! Now let's collect our daytime samples and take them back to the lab for further analysis. Tile, please. UV light, please. Now, I will pass the UV light over the tile to detect the urine samples. Normally, I do this in a dark room. Here are some pictures from earlier. Can you see that light blue spot? That's urine. Hey, what's up, Amy? Sadly, our results were insignificant. Oh. This is surprising as previous studies show that mammals had lower giving up densities in more open habitats using foraging trays like ours. But it's alright, because no result is still a result. But why weren't our results significant? Well, small mammals use indirect clues, including rainfall and moon illumination, to weigh up the risk involved in foraging in certain habitats. But why would that have an effect? Well, the lack of rainfall or high moon illuminations are used as cues for high predator risks, especially in open areas. Well, recently our weather has been dry with clear night skies. Exactly. Therefore, mammals may not be feeding in the open and the semi-open areas. As for our covered areas, foraging trays lacking disturbance, the mammals may have been already found a foraging site with enough to support their nutritional needs. As our sites were put there only a day before, they may have actually increased the cost due to predation risks and the energy requirements for moving and finding the new site. Sometimes insignificant results are just the look of the jaw, guys. It's science. But we did get a visitor. That's, That's all for today. today. Goodbye, Goodbye from Mammal Watch. News.